friends, welcome back. For those who are new here, I'm Kat. I'm a wife, a homeschool mom, and an avid reader. I thought I would share with you today the books that I read during my crazy month of January uh, between a trip out to the other side of the country and being in school. I was a little surprised that my reading didn't slump this month. So let's start with those nerdy stats. During January, I finished nine titles. Um, two of them I had started before January 1st, and um, then I started a another book before January ended just due to me having time left to read. These nine books that I did complete made for um, 2,948 pages read during January. If I'm not mistaken, while Storygraph will put the title that you finished um, in the month, in for that month, so with two of the books that I finished in January but started before, they count for January. But page numbers, since I track my pages every day, are counted by the pages that I read just during the month of January. With these books, um, two of them I read were digital and the other seven were physical copies. And as I mentioned a minute ago, I did read at least uh, five pages every day during the month of January. That was Story Graph's January challenge was to read every single day of the month to get yourself in a good habit with that. So I had a lot of fun with that. Of my books, um, there were a lot of genres, and several of them overlap in genres in Storygraph. So according to Storygraph, three of my titles were considered thrillers, three were mysteries, three were fantasy, three were contemporary, two were romance, um, one was very spicy romance, erotica, one was considered magical realism, one young adult, one literary, and one horror. When you add those up, of course, that's more than nine because some of these in story graph overlap. So let's look at the books that I did read in the order that I read them during the month. The first book that I finished during January I actually started on December 25th. My sisters and I do a book flood uh, book exchange on Christmas Eve, but we were having too much fun to actually start our books on Christmas Eve, so we all started the next day. The book that I received was The Guide. Um, this one is by Peter Heller, and it is a... Technically, it's a second book um, following a character. Um, I just went blank on his name. Hold on. Uh, Jack. Woo! That took a minute. Um, so our main character, Jack, in this is working at a lodge and guiding people for fishing and for um, getting that up and down the river at this private lodge area. This book was one of those. It is kind of that mystery, a uh, little bit of thriller in there. Um, and so trying to figure out what's going on in this area. Um, so I really enjoyed this one. This, I would probably give 3.75 stars. 
Um, I really enjoyed the writing. It was a quick read for me overall. It just may not have been the best time for me to read it being in the winter and this book kind of taking place during those summer warm months. The other book that I finished during January but started beforehand was Shadow of Night. Uh, um, yeah, Shadow of Night. Um, this one is by Deborah Harkness and it is the second in her All Souls trilogy. This one continues to follow Diana and Matthew through their time walking journeys back into Queen Elizabeth I's um, time during um, uh, the Elizabethan London. This was a lot of fun. It was a great reread for me. And I am looking forward to the read along of this, of the third one, coming in May. If I were to rate um, Shadow of Night, I probably would give it 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed it. I love the historical aspects of it. Lots of fun. Um, and just a great reread for me. The next title that I finished during January, I did start during the month of January, and that is Vespertine. This is by Margaret Rogerson. This is the only YA title that I read during January, which is kind of a switch for me. I tend to lean a little more on young adult and less on adult, but this month, this was my only young adult. In this one, we are following um, Artemisia, and she wants to be what's called a um, gray sister. Their job is to help those who are possessed um, to become unpossessed um, and to help keep the order of the land during this time. This was a lot of fun for me. I really enjoy Margaret Rogerson's writing and I had a lot of fun with the magic system that was created in here. This one I would give a five star. The next book that I read in January was Bookshop of Yesterdays. This is a story where we are following Miranda. She, when she was young, was the favorite niece of her uncle, um, and he owned a bookstore. But something ends up happening that she doesn't know everything about. Uh, she just knows that her mom and her uncle have gotten into an argument and she no longer gets to see her uncle. And she kind of continues life without him being a guiding force anymore for about 20 years. And then her uncle passes away and she is given or inherits his bookshop. And this bookshop is not doing very well, and it's Miranda's job to figure out if she's going to keep it open and running while she is a school teacher in another state, or if she's just going to sell it or close the bookshop altogether. This was a lot of fun. Um, there's a lot in this, though. There is a mystery with this story of trying to figure out why her uncle disappeared from her life and the family drama that goes on between the mom and the uncle. Uh, this one I would give probably a four star. There were parts that I was a little confused on 
And some of that is by design because we're getting the story from our main character who she has no idea what has been going on. Um, but there were some parts that just didn't didn't add up in the end and a lot of unnecessary drama occurs due to choices that were made and lots of secrets throughout this whole thing. So, oh, bookshop of yesterday's four stars. The next title that I finished during January was Two Nights in Lisbon. This is by Chris Pavone. This was a lot of fun to read. There's a some thriller aspects and mystery aspects to it. I had a lot of fun with it. It was a neat experience. Um, we have a wife who wakes up to find her uh, new husband has disappeared. They've um, they're not on their honeymoon. Um, but they are on like her first business trip with him. Um, she's, he's the businessman and he, um, normally travels for work and he decides to take her with him to Lisbon, but he disappears one morning and our main character, Ariel, is working to figure out what's happened to him especially when the police and the embassy aren't quite as helpful as she would have liked i probably would give this one a 4.5 stars i really enjoyed the experience of reading it it was a little bit predictable in certain parts and i kind of figured out the um, big plot twist at the end before it was revealed. Um, and so there are some parts about it that you kind of know are coming. One of the, uh, ebooks that I read this month, I was really hoping I would be able to read the physical copy, but that didn't happen. Um, due to production uh, issues, and that was Brandon Sanderson's secret book, Tress of the Emerald Sea. This one, we are following a girl named Tress, and she lives in a world where instead of water for their oceans, they have these spores, and each of the spores do different things when they come in contact with water. This is a um, kind of a pirate theme in it, as Brendan Sanderson kind of explains it in his afterward, is it's what if in The Princess Bride, if Buttercup didn't just accept her loves fate and if she instead went after him to find him um and that really fulfills that idea and it's really fun to see brandon sanderson play with this one he did write this one with his wife in mind and uh princess bride is one of her favorites so it was a lot of fun to kind of get a little bit of insight into a favorite author of mine. I did rate Trust of the Emerald Sea five stars. I had so much fun with it and Brandon Sanderson never uh, fails to deliver a great story. And then there's my spicy romance erotica novel that I read this month, and that's The Priest. In this, we have a man who is heartbroken and ends up turning to the church and 
follows a calling into the priesthood. And we have a woman who just has been hurt in her past marriage and recently divorced. And she is looking to find God's leading in her life. Um, and she goes to a Catholic church and uh, goes to the confession during the confessional time. And she and the priest end up falling in love. I mean, it's, it's a romance. We know what's going to happen. Um, it's a lot of fun though, to kind of get this other side and maybe see how some people might struggle a little bit with um, how life changes and following those callings in our life, even if they aren't what we thought we were being called to. Uh, that's when the priest, I gave a 3.5 stars. Um, it, it was really good, really well wit written. Uh, there were some parts that were unbelievable. Um, how quickly our priest is ready to abandon his vows. Um, just didn't, it didn't seem to sit right with the character. Um, but it was a lot of fun anyway. The next book that I read during January was Grady Hendrick's How to Sell a Haunted House. This one, um, we are following Louise. She lives in California, but grew up in a Charleston home. And when her parents die unexpectedly, it is up to her and her brother to clean out the house and sell it. Um, this one, reading the description and hearing the title put certain images or ideas in my mind of where the storyline would go. And Grady Hendrix doesn't follow what I thought it would go. Um, I thought that this was going to be a story about actually selling the house and this turns more it's more family drama and it's more of dealing with the haunted aspect of the house less with selling it um and i think other we do see like the main um talk of selling it is a realtor comes in and says that basically something's off about the house she thinks it's haunted and they need to have it um depossessed as it were um before she'll sell it and there's a lot going on in here um do not read this with any puppets or dolls in the house with you um it definitely will leave you feeling a little creeped out um i did give grady hendrix um how to sell a haunted house a 3.75 stars and the last book i read during january was the keeper of lost things this is a story that I've actually had on my shelf for a little bit. It was one that I picked up just because of the gorgeous cover. And this one is following, um, our main character is Laura. And she has inherited a house from her boss, Anthony. And we have kind of this... At some points, we have three points of um, view that the story is taking place from. Sometimes it's Anthony telling the story. Sometimes it's Laura. And sometimes there is a, another timeline that we are following um, with Eugenia. Um, 
this was a lot of fun. It is a little bit of magical realism, a lot of contemporary. Um, it's a really fun story to read. It does give you those warm feelings at the end. I did rate this as 4.5 stars. I had a lot of fun reading it and was, when I closed the book, I was left very satisfied with the ending. And there you have it, the books that I read during January. This is six of the nine books, and I had a great time with it. What did you read in January? What was your favorite book? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'll see you soon.